Uh, algebra 1, 8.8. <laughs> this one is factoring using the difference of squares. So to start off this one, we are going to do the pattern first the other way. I think most of us should remember this. Here. We should remember that x minus 2 times x plus 2 turns into what? We could FOIL that and then group it all together, but I'm hoping everybody would understand that that's x squared minus 4. And we called that the difference of squares. Today we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to go in reverse. And we are going to multiply the sum and difference to get the difference of squares. We're going to start off with the difference of squares and work our way backwards to the sum and difference. Now I told you guys when we did our multiplication side of this that this pattern will make your life a lot easier to remember. Well, at this point, now it's coming back to say, hey, you should know me by the way I look, and you should now be able to break me apart. And if you had not taken the time to remember that formula, then you're going to struggle here until you get the idea of what we need to do. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to start with x squared minus b squared. And we will be able to make it a plus b, a minus b, or a minus b, a plus b. It doesn't matter. The two groups can be interchanged, right? That's the uh, commutative or associative property there. Which one? I think it's the commutative property when you take two things and switch their places. When multiplication. So I'm going to give you the steps here for actually finding the difference of squares or factoring the difference of squares. And I think I should actually add a step before all of this. And if I was going to do that, my step above this would be always factor the greatest common factor, the GCF. Always factor, that should be like, we'll call that 1A. Factor the greatest common factor. Anytime you have an uh, ask to factor, you always take the largest term out of everything if possible. So, id step two, you got to kind of ask yourself, self, are there two terms that are subtracted and are perfect squares? So, do you happen to have an a squared minus a b squared? So, we don't, at this point, we don't have one yet. Okay, we're just going to be soon. And if we do, I want you guys to set up some empty parentheses with squares on them. And then we need to figure out what goes in them. So how I do this is I go to the first group and I say, what squared becomes the original problem that we saw in step one? Part B, or part second one, is what squared is equal to B squared? That gives us the A and B. And if I know the A and B, I then can use the formula A plus B, A minus B, I'm factored, and I'm done. Or, like in step four, after I've expanded it, you got to be careful because to be factored, to be considered to be done, Anything and anything that can be factored out still needs to be taken out or completely factored. You can't stop with only one step if there's more to go. Once you commit, you got to go all in. Okay? So, we got to do these four problems. The first one is 81 minus n squared. I want to factor this. So, first thing I should do if it says, hey, it says factor. 
That means factor it completely. So there are only two terms, right? Okay. But I added that extra rule in there that said I should look to see if there's anything common, right? 81, n squared, anything I could take out of both of those? No. Nothing worth it, right? One doesn't count. So the question is, is it a perfect square minus a perfect square? Wait a minute. We need to back up. What's a perfect square again? What defines a perfect square? Someone give me an example of a perfect square. Five times five, which would be twenty-five. Twenty-five is a perfect square. What else? Sixty-four. Nine. Eighty-one. Thirty-six. Those are all perfect squares, but why? Why is that? So when a number is times itself, the result, right? is a perfect square. Got a question. Is 49 over 4 a perfect square? 49 over what? 49 over 4. 49 over 4. Why? You guys, because it's not a nice number? Well, if I, if I threw out a number like 144, is 144 a perfect square? Because what would you do to figure out what number is times itself? It's 12 times 12. But if I didn't know, is there something I could use on my calculator to help me out? Square root button. If I square root 144, I get 12. Is 12 a nice number? Yeah. That makes it a perfect square. But wait a minute. Can I do the same thing here with the square root of 49 over 4? What does that become? How do I square root 4? 7 over 2. Is 7 over 2 really that bad of a number? No, it's actually not, is it? So 49 over 4, we don't call that necessarily a perfect square because it's not just a single number. But it's not wrong, right? I could use that. So let's be careful that sometimes... We do use numbers that don't necessarily look perfect, but they're nice. Okay? So just be mindful of that. I'm going to take that away now. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, is 81 a perfect square? Is n squared a perfect square? Yeah, it's a square of something. So this is what I propose. I say, I'm going to write down the form, and I just got to fill it in. I just got to ask myself, self, what's squared to get 81? 9. And what's squared to get n squared? n. Now, guys, if you remember, that's like my a value, and that's like my b value. And if you remember, a squared minus b squared becomes a plus b and a minus b. So the answer is 9 minus n times 9 plus n. Done. And if you don't know if you're right, if you foil that back together, you get 81 minus n squared. You like that? You have to recognize a pattern. No. Could I have this instead? Yeah. Either way works. They're the same thing, guys. Either one. Do the same thing with part B, and I'll give you guys a couple seconds. Question, is that a perfect square? Minus a perfect square? No. Four is a nice number. Nine's a nice number, but is y cubed a perfect square? No, it's not. Plus, it's a minus plus a positive. Ah, uh, that's not a difference. So what can I do? What should I have done? Take a Y out. Take a Y out. First of all, they both have a Y. Now, do you guys, do you guys see that this is already in standard form for the problem? Yeah. And 
I said, when we're in standard form, I don't necessarily like my leading term to be negative. 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 So can I take the negative out too? Yeah. So instead of just y, can I take a negative y out? What am I left with if I take a negative y out? 4y squared plus 9. Oh, 4y squared? Plus 9. A minus 9? Minus 9. Because I've got to take a negative. And positive divide by negative. I divide it out. Guys, the negative y goes along for the ride. It's on the outside now. We're going to leave it out front. But now I have 4y squared. Is that a perfect square? Yes. Minus 9? Perfect square? Yeah, so the inside part, now we can break it up. 2y, two 3. Y three. So, negative y gets to stay out front, and it becomes 2y minus 3 and 2y plus 3. Do not put the square back in there. Or it could have had... 2y plus 3 and 2y minus 3 in there. But well, that is factored. Next one. Do 16y to the 4th minus 1. Anything common? No. The question is 16y to the 4th, a perfect square? Is 1 a perfect square? No. Hey, guess what? 1 is a perfect kind of everything. Oh, yeah. so you just put it in there. 1 to the first power. 1 to the second power, 3rd power, 4th power, 5th power, 8th power, 100th power. 1 times itself, no matter how many times, is 1. Square root of 1. 5th root of 1. Still 1. So, 1 is 1. 4y squared. Because that's a power of a that's isn't that a power of a product? And that means that 4 would be squared, y squared would be squared, which would be 16y to the fourth. So guess what? What does this become, guys? 4y squared plus 1, 4y squared minus 1, yeah? We're done. Or are we? Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Why are we not done? In there. How's that? I don't want the squares in there. Well, it's not completely factored. 4y squared. Hey, guys, is 4y squared a perfect square? Yeah, 2y. Ooh, 2y. Is 1 a perfect square? Yeah. So, wait, that means I got a square plus a square. We can keep going, right? Oh, no. Sure. No. Guys, I just asked you if you can do a sum of squares. A square plus a square. We can't have that. We don't have that. But the next one is a difference of squares. So guess what? This one can be broken down again, like Nick was saying, to 2y and 1. So 4y squared plus 1 goes along for the ride and... The other two, the other one breaks down to 2y plus 1 and 2y minus 1. You now are done factoring. Now, I'm not going to finish any more problems. I want to highlight something here because they're going to ask you to do this as well. They're going to say, what happens if this was set equal to zero? That means this line would be equal to zero because I didn't change anything, right? That means this would be equal to zero, which means that our last line would be set equal to zero. We've done two numbers before that equal zero when multiplied. What happens if there's three? How do I solve this? I just need to I just need to set all three
parts equal to zero and solve for how many answers potentially could there be? Three. Actually, in this case, there are four. But, well, because you have the top one, which ends up being a y squared, and y squared tells you there's two answers plus two others, that's four total. The only thing is, this top one, if you bring one to the other side, it becomes what? Negative. And if you divide a negative by four, it's still negative. Can you square root negative numbers? Yes. Yeah, you can, but we haven't learned it yet. We haven't learned it yet. So we say there's no real solution for this first one. The second one, if I bring one over, I get 2y equals negative 1 divided by 2. I'm hoping everybody would see that would be a negative 1 half. And y would equal positive 1 half. So we know there are two real solutions. There's also two imaginary solutions. Later on, you guys will understand that if it's a fourth power, there's going to be four answers. This one has a degree of 2. There will be two answers. This one has a degree of 3. There are three answers. There's one, two, three. So I'm just going to set each part equal to zero using the zero product property and solve them out. Now, I'm not going to do the last problem that I erased or these two, but notice that these two have four terms again. So we better talk about this whole progression. If you're given a bunch of terms and it says factor, you always look for a common term. That's number one, common terms. Two. Moving on from there, if there are four terms, or six terms, or eight terms, you're going to try to factor by four. grouping. If there are three terms, and it's a quadratic, you're going to factor by finding the factors of C, if A is equal to 1. If A is not equal to 1, you'll do A times C, factor that way. And if there's two terms, you're going to look for the difference of squares. Right now, that's all you guys know. Tomorrow, we're going to look at the other pattern for quadratics, which was the perfect square trinomials. And we'll factor those as well, using the kind of the same process. Your homework is going to be worksheet 8.8. .8. Have a great day.